It has been my dream is to be able to plant trees like this. Ray Allen wants to be a pioneer as well in the field of bioenergy. His dream is to plant the mega flora tree, not just in the U.S., but worldwide. It's also known as the HDSR tree, which stands for high density, short rotation. High density because of a high yield of lumber and biomass per acre for fuel and other energy uses. The International Technology Development Corporation says it produces five to ten times more biomass than other plants. And short rotation because developers say it grows very quickly, reaching full size around 60 feet tall in just three years. It is God's tree, and I'm the storekeeper. The, the values were way beyond my expectations. It's an amazing tree, you know, it's like a miracle tree. Carlos Freitas is the first grower in California's San Joaquin Valley to produce the trees for commercial use. After 75 days in the ground, Freitas was impressed. Um, they're already reaching a six feet tall, some of them, so it really grown rapidly. It's uh, very exciting. Emerald Energy, the company behind the tree, supplied CBN News with more recent photos of the trees in Freitas's field. Company spokesmen say some grew to 14 feet in just four months, while others made it to 20 feet within a year. Once they top out, it's harvest time. Unlike a traditional tree, the mega flora tree actually regrows from its stump after harvest. It produces no fruit or fertile seeds, which makes it non-invasive, yet it's still productive over a long lifetime. Every other biomass has to be replanted. We plant one time. We cut the tree down, it grows back. While new trees grow, the harvested megafloras can be used to make cellulosic biofuel. Cellulose is the fiber inside a tree. Wood chips from the trunk are eventually turned into liquid biofuel. However, Allen says the tree's greatest attribute is that it cleans the environment. First, he says the roots actually improve the quality of the soil and water under the ground. Having a hollow stem in the tree itself that carries water to the leaf, any pollutant that's in water is carried to the center of the tree and is captured either by the leaf or the wood product itself. That would include salt, selenium, and boron, especially here in the San Joaquin Valley. Allen says these pictures are proof the megaflora trees helped remediate the soil and water in the San Joaquin Valley. He says while the trees did not do well because of little surface water, the ground around them now has thick green grass, which hasn't been there in 25 years. The growth process starts by mixing DNA of two different tree species through root grafting. A treated root goes from soil to greenhouse, and then after about a month and a half, the new tree goes back in the ground. It's a pretty simple operation in just filling pots, treating roots, and getting them planted. And the more we plant, the bigger the forest we have. Critics contend this is too labor intensive. You'll notice Alan and his wife are treating, planting, and watering the roots by hand. Allen, however, sees it as a way to grow the economy, and he welcomes more employees and farmers to help process the roots and grow the trees. I would rather create the jobs and share the income streams and put everybody back to work. The war on poverty starts when the first shovel of dirt is turned over to plant one of these trees. Megaflora tree developers also tout where that shovel is turned over as another benefit. Because the tree can grow in poor soil and harsh climates, they say it doesn't take up land used for our food supply, neutralizing the food versus fuel battle. Skeptics say all of this is too good to be true. To the accusations, Ray Allen says, see for yourself, the trees don't lie.